so cute. They are, man. My job. They be happy for me. Look at you with the awesome skip toe. Get you salt and pepper, you two. Oh. Salt and pepper. Do you? Yeah, Judah loves salt. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here this morning. Those of you that are joining us online, thank you and we appreciate you uh, uh, joining us via online. For those of you that are here, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Would you please rise as we start with the Ole? Welcome to uh, Kalahel Missionary Church for those that are visiting. Members, good to see you guys, beautiful people of Kalahel Missionary Church. The Word of God says, you know, Joy, joy forevermore in your presence. 
Good sir. 
Father God, thank you for the name. Father, we thank you that there is no other name upon which man can call to be saved. We thank you, Father, that even demons tremble at the sound of your name. And we thank you, Father, that at the very mention of your name, lives can be transformed, healed, renewed, redeemed, delivered. Chains can be broken. Oh, what a powerful name it is. And for those of us who are called into your kingdom and have relinquished control of our life to Jesus, what a wonderful name it is. It's not a name of judgment. It's a name of healing, freedom, deliverance. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Father, we just pray your name over this cross. I pray in the name of Jesus, your kingdom come, your will be done to all the needs on that cross. There are some things on there that in our human understanding just seem impossible. Thank you that all things are possible with you. I pray you would move mightily, you would show yourself great and holy and supreme. Father, we pray for Clayton, our Kauai Prison Ministry Chaplain, our brother, as he's battling with some physical issues, sciatica, etc., I pray, Father, you would just bring expedited healing in Jesus' name. And I pray for those in our fellowship, Father, through um, this last couple of weeks have been exposed and some have infected with this new variant. I just pray expedited healing in Jesus' name. More than anything, Father, I pray for peace that passes all understanding to guard their hearts and their minds in Christ Jesus. And Father, for anyone that may be walking and battling fear with this little outbreak going on, I pray that they would be able to take those thoughts captive, make them obedient to Jesus. They've no longer been given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. I pray that we could walk in the power and the love and the soundness that you bought for us on the cross. And Father, we are so thankful that you said that we've not been given a spirit of fear, but a spirit of adoption, that we can cry out, Abba, Father, Papa, God. So I pray if anyone in our fellowship, our sphere of influence as a ministry is walking in fear over these latest developments, that they could just come to Papa. And they could just be honest and vulnerable with you and let you know their hearts. And they would trade their fear for your perfect love that casts out all fear. Ah, cover us, Father, in your name. Amen. Amen. Let's take a seat. Uh, blessings to you. My name's John. If you're visiting, I'm the Kahu or senior pastor here. If you're online, I'm John. Hello. <laughs> you know, uh, on the first service, I, I just felt uh, kind of a strong word from the Lord to encourage folks. And I know we have a lot of you that have communicated with me that you're, you're staying home right now. Uh, you've been exposed maybe through your vocation, your work, your families, your sphere of influence. Thank you for that. Thank you for being respectful like that. We do appreciate that. And there's some that are caring for older parents, and they just want to weather this new little uh, spike. And uh, what a blessing it is to have you join us uh, online like this. It's such an awesome thing. And maybe it's not ideal, but you know, back in the day, you couldn't do anything. I remember back in the day when we were like in the 70s on staff at a church up in Alaska, uh, occasionally we'd get some snow uh, that even Alaskans stayed home and we wouldn't have church. And you had to just rely on everybody calling everybody. And then in the 70s, I mean, we barely had, we, I don't even think we had cable TV. We sure didn't have the internet. And uh, you know, what a blessing it is if we have a few disruptions happening around us. We can still connect, albeit at a little bit of a distance, but it's better not connecting at all. And what a joy it is to be able to connect in person, yeah? There's just something about being able to join together as the body. 
Today I'm super excited about uh, our message because I'm having Ronnie speak. Ronnie's one of our elders. He's one of our KITI graduates. He's one of, uh, he's credentialed in our tribe, the Missionary Church. He's our prayer coordinator. He covers all of the, the facilities here, making sure they're clean and healthy. Uh, Ronnie wears a lot of hats and he's Puerto Rican. That's the best. The worst is he's a Bears fan, but Clayton, I'm, I'm, I'm covering your heart later today, bro, and you're sad. But, um, you know, Ronnie, about three, four years ago, God started stirring some things in his heart. He'll tell you more about that. But God kind of solidified it about three years ago of uh, a church plant that we're, we're going to partner with Ronnie for North Carolina. Then things happen with this pandemic thing. And, you know, it's so interesting. We make our plans and God directs our steps. And so we feel confident that we are in step with the spirit. And even though our timing sometimes gets a little bit askew, God's timing is always perfect. And so we're at this stage where uh, we really sense from the Lord it's time to take this step and move forward. So I asked Ronnie today if he would share a little bit about that so you could start praying and partnering with him in prayer. We'll talk more as time gets closer for uh, us sending his family out. We planned it to have it today because uh, a month or so ago, maybe uh, six weeks ago, Ronnie and I had scheduled a trip to leave this coming Friday uh, to go do some lead work in um, North Carolina, some logistical stuff, some technical stuff, some relational stuff. And we were going to have Ronnie share a little bit. Hey, guys, pray for us. We're taking off Friday for about four or five days. We'll be back, and we're going to do scouting the land a little bit. He's already done a couple scout trips. And uh, with this surge, we just thought, you know, it's better just to stay put and not be stranded in, like, North Carolina, <laughs> of all places, uh, for 10 days or whatever the obligatory uh, thing would be. So we're going to put that off a little bit. But we still need you to be praying heavy duty between now and whenever the Lord releases us to go over there. And with that, Ronnie, come up. I want to pray over you real quick. And just let him share his heart and let the Lord's been laying on his heart. Father, thanks for Ronnie. I just thank you for just our partnership in the yes, gospel. Yes. I'm honored and humbled to be able to partner with uh, this brother. And I thank you that you led him here to KMC. Um, our lives will never be the same because of who he is and how he walks that out obediently. So now I pray you would just give him a clarity of thought, clarity of speech. And I pray, Father, that you would help us all capture uh, your heart for this, this endeavor to expand your kingdom. What an honor it is to be a part of that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. amen. Thank you. Amen. God bless you, church. All right. Yeah, it's been an interesting uh, four years, three, four years. And so we're going to talk about Nuevo Comienzo. Nuevo Comienzo in Spanish and English means new beginnings. And so uh, before I get into the vision, I want to talk to you about the new comienzo the, when the church started. And so if you go with me with, to Luke 24, 49, we're going to start from the beginning before we get to the church so you can understand what's going on before so see what happens. So here we have in Luke 24, 49, it says, See, I will send you what the, my father promised, but you are to stay in Jerusalem until you have received power from above. So it's pretty interesting that he tells the disciples to wait in Jerusalem. He doesn't tell them how long. He doesn't tell them any details, just wait. All right, so we have these guys that are waiting. As we go on to um, Acts 1, 3, it says, After he suffered and died, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them by 40 days, and speaking about the kingdom of God. So after he passed away and he rose again, he started appearing to the disciples uh, in an area of 40 days. And during those 40 days, did you see that? That he said, 
He's speaking about the kingdom of God. He is telling, I want to know, I would love to know what was it that he was telling them about the kingdom of God for those, for all those periods that he got together. Because I'm pretty sure it must have been some amazing uh, stuff. If we go down to uh, Acts 1-4, Jesus told them to wait again for the promise that was given. So which promise exactly? If we remember in Luke uh, three sixteen, the apostle, uh, sorry, the John, his cousin, he says, "I baptized you with water, but one is coming who is more powerful than I. I am not worthy to untie the straps on of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire." So this was a word that was given three years ago, and now. It's starting to pass. It's going to start picking up speed. What was said back then. So in Acts 1.8. says. You will receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. And Samaria. And to the ends of the earth. So here he is. Again. He's letting them know something amazing is going to happen at, and in this time. You don't know, but you just need to wait. And when we see that where it says the power of the Holy Spirit, we're saying that the, the, the Holy Spirit, he's going to give them courage. It says that the Holy Spirit is going to fill them with boldness. It's saying that the Holy Spirit is going to bring confidence upon them. It's saying that the Holy Spirit is going to give them fresh insight. It's saying that the Holy Spirit is going to give them new abilities. It's saying that the Holy Spirit is going to fill them with authority. How amazing is that? And so the gospel is going to be spread, first of all, to the Jews in Jerusalem. Then he's going to go to the Samaria. And then to the Gentiles. Which eventually ends up with you and me. By verse 9, Jesus was taken to heaven. And so why is this important? This is important because the disciples had to see Jesus go up to ascend to heaven. Because he had told them that that's what was going to happen. And now they're actually seeing this. So if they're seeing this, that means that what Jesus promised to them about the Holy Spirit, about power coming upon them, it's going to come about. Glory be to God. So then in verse 14, the 11 disciples, along with the women, including Jesus' mother Mary and his brothers, were continually in prayer. I love it that they were continually in prayer. And when it came down to choose the 12th disciple because Judas had already committed suicide and so they needed to fill that one slot, they were continually in prayer. How important that is. And the lot casted on Matthias. Before they made that decision, they could have gone with their, their heads and said, okay, we like Matthias better. Or Barnabas. But no, they prayed. They waited to the Father, told them, this is the person you should choose. They didn't make that choice. They wanted it to be the choice that God had wanted. They wanted God's will be done, God's kingdom come. And when they do that, it would succeed. Now in Acts 2.1, it says they were together in one place for 50 days. 50 days. They are waiting for this promise to come. They didn't know it was going to be 50 days. But they knew that there was a promise that was coming. So they were there in that room in one accord. They were there in that room. One minded in agreement. Waiting for that promise. The Bible does not say they were complaining about the, the lack of sleep or, or maybe the, too much cushion on the, the chairs. That didn't matter. They were all focused with one goal in mind. Waiting to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. And verse 2 to 4 says, They were all together in one place. 
Suddenly a sound like a violent rushing wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were staying. And tongues like flames of fire that were divided appeared to them and rested on them. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different languages as the Spirit gave them the ability to speech. In verses 5 and 8, they, there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven. When this sound occurred, a crowd came together and was confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. And they were astounded and were amazed, saying, Look, aren't these, all these uh, speaking Galileans? How is it that each of us can hear in our own native language? Can you imagine that all of these people from around the world are gathered here celebrating this feast and all of a sudden they're walking and they stop because they hear this rumbling going on in this, this um, uh, uh, second floor and it's in their language. I can imagine they're walking down. They're like, Espérate, chico. Oye, Manny. Tú oye, brother, lo que está pasando. ¿Qué es esto lo que está pasando allá? Ellos están declarando la gloria de Dios allá en nuestro lenguaje. Y son judíos, brother. In each language, they were saying, what is this? We are hearing these guys preach about what? About the goodness of God in our own languages. I can imagine how, how, how that moment when they are hearing the word of God in their languages, that they, they started hearing but in there, they started listening to what the message was saying. And because they started listening to what the message was saying, it started changing their hearts. It started opening their minds. It started opening the, the glory of God. It says in verse 11 and 12, we hear them speaking in magnificent acts of God in our own language. What could this be? So then Peter steps up and he starts, he starts preaching it. Peter starts with Acts 2, 14 to 21. He is that those verses will tell them about Jesus, who Jesus is. That Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament prophecies. And then he finishes with uh, uh, verse 21. And he says, And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Then he continues on with uh, uh, verse 25 through 36. And there he is telling them that Jesus is the Messiah. The audience came under conviction and said to Peter and to the apostles, What must we do to be saved? The things that they heard up there was changing their hearts, was changing their way of thinking, was changing the way they felt. There was something about it that was moving them. That they wanted more. In Acts uh, 37 to 40, he tells them the, Christ, the risen Christ could change their lives. In verse 38, it says, Peter replied, Each of you repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Repent means to turn away from your sins, to change directions. But instead to turn to Christ, depend on Him for forgiveness, guidance, and purpose. Now, this is Peter. If you remember Peter, when you read throughout the, the Gospels, uh, Peter was an unstable leader in that time with Jesus. It's, this is the same Peter who had to be rebuked by Jesus. This was the same Peter whose first thought when the situation came up was to grab the knife, slice the soldier's ear off when they came to arrest Jesus. This is the same Peter who denied him three times. And we see here how Jesus forgave Peter. And he restored Peter. In Acts 2, 41 to 42, it says, That day 3,000 believers 
were baptized and they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching fellowshipping breaking of the bread and prayer 3,000 can you imagine that 3,000 people with the same mindset saying we want to know more we want to know more about Jesus about what he did and what that means and in verse 46 it says the day after day they went to the house of God together so they started going back to the house because they wanted more they weren't satisfied with what they heard the first day they wanted more they, they felt a hunger a spiritual hunger for this God in verse 47 it says God added to them day every day those who were being saved thus a new beginning began these people went home they learned they understood they went back home and then they started bringing out the gospel over there they became disciples who made disciples who made disciples and churches started popping everywhere like popcorn it's amazing and so this is where our vision starts like Pastor John said a couple of years ago I sensed that God was telling us it's time our time on Kauai is coming to an end so when I woke up I told my wife I said hun I think the Lord just told me that our time on Kauai is coming to an end she went pale on me she, <laughs> her eyes got this big and she's like when do you think I'm like I don't know but it's coming so I told her I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell Pastor John just so he knows because we don't know and so he'll help us pray so I went and I, I talked to Pastor John. Pastor John told me the same thing. When, when do you think? I'm not sure. But I do know that the time is coming. He said, okay, let's pray. So as we started praying, we started praying, 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 and God kept telling me, I feel him, your time coming, uh, and, and, and Kauai is coming to an end. So I'm like, I keep asking where, where, when, when, where? And so, at that time, I was uh, in uh, the GOC board, the general, um, uh, the general oversight uh, council. Thank you. And we we meet. It's like a elder-led board in Indiana that runs the whole church. And so, every year we go. I go twice up to Indiana for some meetings, and the third time we go to Florida for a spiritual retreat. And it's held every January. So as January is coming, I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm gonna, I hope to hear from you in this retreat, Lord. I need to hear from you. I need to hear directions, Father. And so I tell my wife and Pastor John, and they're praying. And so the time comes. I fly, I fly out there. I get to spend the day with our president, Pastor Steve Jones. And um, so during our day, he, he asked me, what do you, do you see yourself doing anything in the missionary church? And I'm like, I'm glad you asked. And so I start telling him what God's been putting on my heart. And he looks at me and he tells me, you're going to hear from God in this retreat. I'm like, all right. So we go and each day we have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Between lunch and dinner, they'll release us so we can go and either go to your room, spend time with God, or go walk around this beautiful facility and just seek God. And so I would go to my room and I would pray. I would take a quick shower and then I would pray and I would just be pacing back and forth and then say, Father, I need to hear from you, Lord. Father, open my heart, Lord. I need to see your hand guiding me, Father. Father, give me instructions, oh Lord. And so I would do this for the first two days. On the third day, um, as I'm, I woke up, because I, ha I had a dream and I woke up. And the dream was that I was helping Franklin Graham in a crusade in November. And November because of the pumpkins. Uh, I don't like pumpkins. Yuck. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so I said, okay. So I went and I talked to um, Pastor Steve Jones. And Pastor Steve Jones said, awesome. Go talk to Jose. Jose is the one that runs the, the Hispanic portion of the missionary church. And who was also the one uh, that submitted my name for the board that I'm on. And so I told him, and he, was, and he shot up. He's like, hallelujah, we've been praying for someone to start a church in North Carolina. We don't have churches in North Carolina. And I'm like, oh, I look at his wife, and his wife is like, yes. 
I'm like, all right, North Carolina it is. Okay, we got direction. <laughs> all right, so we're doing good. And so, so I told Pastor John, and he's like, okay. So we didn't have a timeline yet. So two weeks, two months afterwards, Pastor John starts talking about this class that they're going to start giving, which is called KLTI, which he mentioned. It's, um, it's to give credentials to those who want to be ordained, uh, credentialed and ordained in the, the missionary church. So I said, that's it. After that, that's what we'll be leaving. Pastor John said, amen, let's pray. And we continue to pray. And we just prayed, prayed, prayed. And my wife, and then the COVID hit, so everything just dropped dead. And so time kept coming, and I, I didn't hear nothing. I didn't see nothing. And we had our, our little daughter, Zoe, in June. And so one day, Zoe wakes up. I give her to her mom. And I'm praying, I'm praying. I'm say, Lord, did I get this wrong? Did I get your message wrong? And if I did, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to put words in your mouth. And so he, uh, as I'm praying, we have Pandora on, on a Christian station. And they started playing um, Just As I Am. Just As I Am is the song that they give, uh, Franklin Graham and Billy Graham gave um, at the end of their uh, crusades. And that's when people come down. And I heard that and I got excited. I'm like, Ram, Ram, look, listen, listen. The song. She's like, what? The song is just as I am. It's the one that Billy Graham plays, Franklin Graham plays at the end of Crusades. And she's like, okay, whatever. <laughs> Three o'clock in the morning, she just wasn't having it. Okay, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'm feeding. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, oh. So then Ramlin tells me, Ronnie, I've been praying for God to show me as well. Not just you, but I want God to show me. I'm like, that's a great prayer. And let's pray that. I'll help you pray that. And so that day, that morning, I went to work to, at Ink Spot. And I was, I was working. My wife calls me and tells me, Ron, I got a, me a message saying that someone from, um, has been trying to hack my Instagram account. And they're like, um, you never guess from where. I'm like, North Carolina? She's like, yep, guess from where? I'm like, no way. Get out of here. Charlotte? She's like, yep. I'm like, oh, you asked for a sign, you got a sign. That was funny. And so then Ramadan's like, kept, kept praying. She's like, God, I, I want to go beyond this. I want to I wanna meet somebody from North Carolina that I can talk to. And so it so happens that Noel's teacher, we go to Kahili Adventist School in Kapa'a, and her teacher just moved down from Charlotte, North Carolina, to teach at Kahili Adventist School. And so there you go. You ask, you receive. And Ramana was like, oh, wow. And then it turns out that their dentist, their, pediatric, their, their dentist, he, she's from North Carolina as well. So God just kept confirming and so awesome and so then I'm going walking around I'm walking around uh, the Kui Grove and there's a card shop I collect cards baseball cards football cards and so I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna see if by any chance they have baseball cards for the Chicago Bears or Cubs <clears throat> And so I went, I found three Chicago Bears, Bears. And so I'm, I go to my car and I'm looking, I'm reading the information on the back. Papi, can you put that on the. This is our ex quarterback. We, we fired him. But, not the point. Look where he's from North Carolina. I was like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. And so. Then I'm like, okay, Lord. Then Ramlin, for Christmas, I didn't show this one in the first one. Ramlin gave me a, a special hat for Christmas. Go ahead and put the hat up, puppy. This hat, I have a few, actually, of these hats. They're made by veterans for veterans. And the piece of uh, camouflage in there is from a un actual uniform of one of the elite unit soldiers. And so they have like different ones from different, and it's really cool. There's only limited few. And so we found out that this company is, is located 
North Carolina. I was like, oh, right on. Okay, I said, this is good, girl. I love the way he's been confirming it. And so, time is coming, and I'm like, okay, Lord, am I going to be able to go to North Carolina this year because of COVID? And I said, Lord, how can, how can I know that it is from you? Because I want to be in step with you. And if this is the year that I'm going to go over there, I need to, we need to get going so I can start prepping and praying. And, and a lot of things have to happen. I said, how can I know if it's from you, Lord, that I'm going this year? I'm like, okay, I know. I said, Lord, what if tomorrow, Saturday, when I take my kids out, I find, I come back home with a North Carolina quarter in my pocket. What are the chances of that happening? 60 million to one. Okay, so we go out the next day, we go mini golfing, we go to Hanalei, we come home. I dig in my, my pocket, pull out my change. Papi? North Carolina quarter. I said, oh Lord, okay. Okay, Lord, I got it. We're, I'm going this year. That's awesome. So I get ready for my trip to North Carolina. So I'm doing all these things of places I, I need to go see. Pastor John, we had been meeting, and so he had been helping me, finding me these nonprofit organizations because I'm trying to find out where the Latinos are. And so there's some churches. There's one church I wanted to look. All of the other ones that were Hispanic, they're Pentecostal, and I don't want to go back to that route. Um, and so I, I found one. Uh, can you make, put up the list, Papi? And so this is my list that I had. I have some nonprofit organizations. I have some, uh, like, Charlotte Regional Visitor Center. Because well, I want to find some information about where are the Latinos in this place. And so I made this place two days, uh, like, like, probably like a week before we left, Pastor John and I did. And so two days before I leave, my dad calls me and tells me, Ronnie, you have a cousin in North Carolina. I'm telling him, I said, Pop, uh, there's, there is a lot of, North Carolina is huge. So find out where he is. Maybe we can see each other. We, I haven't seen my cousin in, in over 40 years. And so my father calls me back and he says, he's somewhere named Charlotte. I'm like, Pop, that's where I'm going. Give me his number. So he calls his sister and Titi, Titi um, sends him uh, the phone number. And so... Um, I get to North Carolina, I call him, and so as soon as I get to Car Carolina, it's like 5 in the afternoon, I go to eat because I'm hungry, I, p I find this nice Dominican restaurant, and so there's two families sitting down, and so okay, I'm going to eat, I'm going to go introduce myself to these folks, I'm going to find out where, uh, you know, where the Latinos are, and just throw out, throw out what, I'm, what I'm here for. So I go up, and the first family's like, oh, we don't know, we're from South Carolina. I'm like, oh. Okay, on vacation. Okay. All right, cool. So nice meeting you. Enjoy. Okay. So I go to my next, I, the next people that are eating. I interrupt them. And so I'm like, hey, I'm Ronnie. And I start telling them everything. And, and they're like, we don't know. We're from South Carolina. I'm like, are you kidding me? Really? I come to North Carolina. And all I find so far is uh, South Carolinans. So I'm like, okay. So I go to, I'm on my way out. Uh, I stop to talk to the hostess. And I say, hey. I start telling him the whole thing. Where do the Latinos meet? He's like, I don't know. I'm from South Carolina. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Are there any of you North Carolinans here? And so I'm like, okay. So then I went to, I went to um, my room in the hotel. And so the next day, I went up to the Charlotte Regional Center, the Charlotte Info Center, which turned out to be just places where they have maps for the tourists. That's it. I was like, okay, so what? So then I went that day to the, um, the Billy Graham Library. And so then I got, after that, went home to the hotel and I called my cousin. And so he's like, oh man, that's so great. I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, let's definitely meet. So we have, go have dinner at his place. The, Eli, can you put a picture of me and him? This is my cousin whom I hadn't seen in over 40 years. And so it was just amazing. Um, last time I saw him, well, I think we visited him in, in, um, in New York City, and so it was a, uh, just an amazing reunion. Okay, Papi, go back to the, to the list. So 
Um, I'm talking to my cousin, and it turns out that he's a Christian. I'm like, oh, praise the Lord. And so I start telling him everything that's going on, and why am I there? And he tells me at the end, as I'm about to leave, he's like, do you want to come to our church? I tell him, um, no, I want, to, I want to go to this church that I found online that I want, to, I want to see. I want to see if I can connect with some people and make connections and, and just know people there from this church to see if there's anything there for me. And so he's like, okay, well, if anything, just give me a call. So I said, okay. So I went back to the hotel. I'm at the hotel room, and I'm like, well, you know what? I want to spend more time with my cousin. So I'm like, I call him up. I'll say, Jimmy, I'll go with you. Call me. Um, email me the, the address. So he emails me the address. And when he's looking at the, I'm looking at the address, I'm like, why does that address look so familiar? I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. The, thir the third from the top, from the bottom. That's the church that I wanted to go visit that I decided not to go visit because I was going to go to my cousin's ha uh, church. <laughs> Turns out it's the same church. <laughs> Is that amazing or what? And so, uh, so we got to go to that church and you know, I met the people and it was just amazing people. I love the pastor. He is a, the, this church is open, has a main building, and then it has another building on the side where different um, uh, groups use the church. You have an Arabic Christian group, you have a Jewish Christian group, you have Brazilian, Vietnamese, and so it's really cool. And um, when I had looked this up with Pastor John, Pastor John looked it up and says, this would be a good church because it seems like they're open open for this kind of stuff and sure enough it was and so when when uh, I've been meeting with Pastor John as he said and so Pastor John told me what is on your heart you know tell me what the Lord is speaking to you go ahead Bob, put the logo and so I, I told Pastor John okay so the problem with Latinos is we know Jesus but we don't know who Jesus is Okay, the problem with the Latinos is that they don't know how to grow in faith. I was, I was a Catholic. I didn't know, I know Jesus, but I didn't know about him. I had, uh, I know what faith was, but I was not growing in faith because no one was telling me, no one was teaching me about faith. And the purpose, no one ever told me about a purpose. And like, it's the same thing. And especially here, and can you go back to the, the list? The first one up here says La Coliación. La Coliación is a nonprofit organization that help immigrants come. When they come over, they help them with lawyers, with uh, schooling, with paperwork, whatever they need, they're there for them, helping them. But these folks don't have a spiritual uh, person there, so I'm hoping um, I make connections with uh, the lady, one of the ladies there, the, one of the two ladies there, Anna Alba. And so um, it was funny because when we started talking, she was like, oh, there's, there's so many churches in, in North Carolina. I'm like, yeah, but as long as there's people that aren't saved, you can use more. And she's like, that's true. And so from then on, it, it broke the ice and we just we became buddies. And so this is my heart of going back over there, of going to North Carolina. As you can see, all of the things that, that have come about, people have told me, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, um, uh, what you call it, test God. I'm like, I'm not. I'm about to go somewhere where back then I, did, I don't know anybody to a place that I don't have a job, I don't have a house, my ki I'm going to root my kids up there. All three of them were born here. I'm going to take them over there. And I'm going to do something from scratch. So believe me, I need this to be of God. I don't want to take no chances and go over there and it just be a big old mess. So I need to make sure that it is from God. And God has just been just answering our, our, our petitions as, as crazy as they seem, but just telling us, this is of me. It's just in my time. And as Pastor John said, we were hoping to go uh, now Friday, so that's canceled, hopefully in, in February. Then after that, in a around April, my wife and I will go to North Carolina to look for a place to live. And then so the final move will be probably somewhere towards June. 
And so that is our, our vision casting. And uh, we pray that you would um, consider praying with us. I have a table in the back where I, if you want to sign up so I can get your email and I can just let you know as things come up and just uh, let you know. Um, of course, first of all, we need prayer and then we'll need your financial support. If you feel led, you can give through the church. Um, but God is amazing. The things that he's going to do, I can feel it every time we pray. My wife is excited. Pastor John is excited. And um, I thank you for all your prayers. That For those of you that have known and have prayed and continue to pray. So we thank you. And one of the things I'm most excited about, um, you know, I can, Paul and I can resonate. Our whole ministry has been going places where we don't know anyone. And all except here, uh, starting from scratch. This is the first time we've been senior pastors. We've not planted a church. We didn't know if we had that grace gift and how quickly people would hurt us <laughs> if, if we came into their midst. But thankfully, we found loving folks here that love us. But, you know, this is a big step of faith. And the traditional church plant kind stuff, what, what we used to do and what many people still do is, it's kind of you go to a place, you put up a sign, hey, we're, we have a service here, y'all come now. And that's still a model. I, I think that's not the most effective way, especially when we're talking about a people group like this. Uh, Ronnie has caught the, the vision of disciple making as the core because you can go and put up a sign and get people to come you may never see people discipled and you may not even see evangelism a lot of it is just uh, kind of transfer growth disgruntled folks especially there's a new place in town maybe it'll be perfect like me and uh, his heart is he wants to build relationships and start making disciples and this is going to be exciting. And we have the privilege to be able to partner with him. We're going to talk more about it as it goes. But I, I thought it would be nice, and especially because we thought we were going to get on a plane Friday, to be able to uh, just share with you. A lot of you in, in the family have heard us talking for a few years and wondering, oh, what's happening? Well, it's happening. The Lord's doing it. I don't know about the Bears reference. Uh, I would have maybe. He never told me that until I heard it today for the first time. Because how are they in the playoffs? Oh, forget it. They're not in the playoffs. But anyway, um, you know, I, I think that this is going to be an exciting adventure for us as a family. Uh, pray that God gives us wisdom. Uh, we do have some logistical things we need to take care of to connect him there to the community and, and a bunch of different things and to our tribe, the Missionary Church. Uh, coverage on that area. But extend your hand this way. Let's just pray a, a, a sealing blessing over this message. Father, thank you. Uh, it's so cool how you uh, meet each of us where we're at. And for Ronnie and his family to be able to see uh, that need of having um, that confirmation in those ways, thank you for that, Lord. And I just pray that you would continue to have your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven for this. And as there are people there, especially these immigrants that are kicked to the bottom of the food chain, I pray that they would be transformed by the power of Jesus and that you would use this family, each one of them, as they engage folks that they would be able to find discipleable people who will be transformed by Jesus and then share that and disciples others and others and others. And we would see a move of God go through that discarded immigrant population that the society there has just thrown aside and we would see revival birth from that humble beginning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand. We're going to have the team close us in worship. <coughs>
pursue us, may we turn around and embrace you instead of run away. Oh, thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm glad your daughter allowed you to come back up and play drums with us today, Holly. That's been a blessing. Blessings on you guys.